self-acceptance, self-love. We all know and have been told ad nauseum that the source and the seat of our power is the value with which we hold ourselves. That's easy for your good attributes and the things that you think that you are either skilled at or gifted at or the things that you hold about yourself in high esteem. But what about the dark and ugly parts? I would argue that they need as much or more shame-free acceptance at that table as the highest noble queen in her crown. Welcome to Body of Truth. I am Rebecca Windsor. Body of Truth was born after uh, my fabricated fairy tale marriage that I made up in my head was a fairy tale marriage, finally disintegrated into the reality uh, that it had descended into and crumbled to dust. And then my son left for college and I was left with two identities that no longer existed, wife and mother. So I needed to ask myself some deep questions about who was I? (laughs) What am I here to do in this body, in this time, on this earth? Deep questions, but what can I say? I'm a seeker. So in the process of obviously needing to live in this world and in this life in a different way, since the lies that I told myself clearly were not sustainable, I needed to ask myself these questions and struggle with them. And, and wrestle with them. And they're not easy questions to answer all the time. But I will tell you that in that, I learned this beautiful lesson of in fully inhabiting my body and then fully using my body to make the, these new decisions literally circulate up and through my body with repetition. So now I've got a physical muscle memory that translates to a new neural pathway in my brain, which translates to a literal new brain to make your decisions with. The simple device of repetition. It's just like practice. It's just like anything else you want to get good at. You want to get good at something? You practice. We all know this. Alan Iverson told us very clearly talking about practice. So um, today, uh, after some amazing illumination in the work that I am working on to rid myself of far more scarcity that I was aware of, I realized that where my scarcity emanates is because all of myself's, two, two points I want to make, all of myself's do not have a seat at the table. They're at the kids' table. They're relegated to a seat of shame. So, you know, within all of us are, yes, the performer, the person that's outgoing, but the flip side of that is the attention whore, is the, and I've talked about this before, about how my perfectionistic inner ice queen bitch tries to silence me through shame but she also tries to heap shame upon these person out the manipulator right she wants to make me relate these sides of my personality in shame so that I don't activate them keeping me in a comfortable scarcity this is a place she knows but in order to fully realize yourself and actualize every part of you The ugly parts need to be actualized too. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but by trying to shush your less attractive qualities, they will come out in shadow. They'll come out. They'll just come out in in further and more insidious sabotage than they already do. Bringing them into the light is a proactive way to deal with them. The other thing I want to offer, and this is something that I for sure suffer with, and I think the people that are thoughtful and like to think about these deep thoughts and and the different aspects of our personalities, and, you know, I am obsessed with the archetypes, and, and I would say that for a long time I hid behind the archetypes, and I think I'm starting to do that again, because they are useful in illustration, but in your life and living your life, You need to have one cohesive braided personality. 
shifting your focus and keeping yourself sectioned off, which I tend to do, does not serve you. Because again, you're either suppressing or denying aspects of your personality, or you're you're so in your head that you're not allowing the organic process of life to go on and flow. The opposite of flow is super hyper self-consciousness. And though self-analysis is powerful, sometimes you need to get to pull your head out of your own ass and fucking live. So that is what I am determined to do today is to rid myself of the paralysis of analysis and let myself just physically live and tell the truth as much as I can and not shame those sides of me that I really kind of want to cloak a bit because it's all me. Those are all sides of you too. And I invite you to use this space as a place of safety to look at them. I can hold that space for you. We all have unattractive aspects to our personalities. It's how much we're willing to look at the truth of them that allows them to operate alongside the glorious, obvious, noble sides of us that we tend to highlight and push forth, of course, for everyone else to see. We don't want to lead with our tattered selves. I so understand that. I so appreciate that. And it's an endless investigation. There's endless layers to discover. So I invite you to look at that today. And as you examine these things, as always, I ask you to identify where that energy is in your body. If you get a pang of shame, where does it hit you? And what does that feel like? That identification is really powerful because it's how change begins. I hope this gave you something to think about and I will see you tomorrow.